Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Broman, and today I've got something special for you guys. A box wing airplane. A box wing is a type of biplane where the wings are joined at the wingtips so that it makes a rectangle when viewed from the front. Oftentimes, box wings don't have a horizontal tail either. I designed this airplane because I wanted to get more flight time. After some experience with some more conventional looking airplanes, I realized that the best way to get more flight time was to carry more batteries. But to handle the extra weight, I would need a bigger airplane with a bigger wing. I also, however, wanted the wingspan to be under a meter for easy storage and transport. The solution was to go to a biplane design with two small wings instead of one big one. Biplanes also have the advantage of being more durable because they have more structure than monoplanes, which is important when working with Dollar Tree foam core. But biplanes aren't without their drawbacks either though, and the biggest one is that they are inefficient because of wingtip vortices. At the wingtips of all airplanes, high pressure air from the bottom of the wing spills over into the low pressure region on the top of the wing. This creates a swirling motion, or a vortice, which creates drag. Biplanes, therefore, generally have more drag than monoplanes because they have four wingtips instead of two. In fact, as I was trying to decide what type of airplane to build, I also designed a monoplane that would have a wing that could be detached and folded in half for easy transport. I calculated that while this design and the box wing would have similar weights and speeds, the box wing would actually have about 30% less flight time than its monoplane counterpart. Ultimately though, I decided not to pursue the monoplane design because I thought that even with wooden reinforcements, Dollar Tree foam core just was not a durable enough material to be building folding and removable wing mechanisms out of. But now the question is, why not a more traditional looking biplane with a normal tail? And the answer is speed. Larger airplanes with more batteries tend to fly faster, but since most of the fields that I fly on are relatively small, I found that this was impractical. Airplanes generally have a tendency to rotate forwards into a nosedive, so then the tail has to push down to rotate it back. Pushing down, however, is counterproductive, and the airplane then needs to fly faster to make up for it. In a box wing design, however, the two wings are offset so that they stabilize each other without relying on a horizontal tail. Since both surfaces produce lift, a box wing can fly about 10% slower than a biplane with a traditional tail, which is much more comfortable on small fields. A first-person view system on the front of the airplane allows me to fly like I'm actually in the pilot's seat. The camera is mounted on a servo motor, so I can look left and right. The vent in the nose of the airplane allows air to flow through it to cool the batteries and the radio. The nose of the airplane is also the most likely part to take damage in a crash, so it can be removed and replaced if necessary. I also have a rack up here to put some batteries for trim weights, but these don't actually power anything. The batteries that power the airplane are kept in a hatch on the underside. There's enough room for two large batteries, and they're held in with rubber bands. The speed controller is mounted on the outside of the airplane for maximum cooling. Another vent allows cooling air to exit the airplane, and a second hatch allows access to the power connections and the radio. The motor is mounted at the back of the airplane to make room for the camera in the front. The back of the airplane is tapered to help minimize the wake and direct more air into the propeller. Because the airplane doesn't have landing gear, the propeller will actually hit the ground upon landing. To prevent it from breaking off, I used a prop saver and a rubber o-ring to hold it onto the motor so that it can bend on impact. And finally, for the control surfaces, I've chosen elephants. I considered using an aileron setup on the front wing, but I didn't want to disrupt airflow going over the rear wing.
airplane wobbles around in the wind a little bit, but it does seem to have a tendency to right itself. Because of its large size, however, it's difficult for the wind to actually blow it off course.